<laughs> Good morning. Happy Saturday. Today, we're going to talk more about protein and important tips about protein to increase the protein that you are taking in every day. Now, um, a few things about this because I've gotten some questions recently about how to do this, how does this look, how do I know I'm getting the right kinds of proteins, um, I really want to get more protein in my diet, I want to build lean muscle mass, I want to get ripped, I want to lose weight, or I just want to be healthier, I want to have more energy. Having more energy is a huge, huge thing for people, especially nowadays when people are busy, holiday season coming up, schedules are getting crazy, schedules are getting crazy left and right. So. Here's some important things that you can do. Now, oftentimes by implementing this, I'm not kidding, for just a few days, just a few days of following some of these things, you are going to be increasing your energy. I mean, tenfold, tenfold. It's, it's incredible. But this, this thing right here, bioavail, bioavailable, that's the key with increasing your protein. It's got to be bioavailable. <clears throat> Yesterday I did my video on um, um, digestion. So these two things go together. The digestive piece yesterday, if you didn't see that, go ahead and, and watch that video. And then this piece here, the bioavailability of the protein that you're eating. Very, very important. All right, so how to increase the protein that you're eating for the day. Simple breakdown, simple, simple breakdown. So here is protein and here's just a simple schedule here. Breakfast, snack or shake or something like that. Lunch, snack, dinner. You can eat more than that, but eating every two to three hours increases your metabolism and everything else. So if you're trying to increase your protein, it's really tough to try and, you know, have, oh, look, I had pancakes for breakfast or I had, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, I went out and I had waffles or something like that, like a lot of carb. You get really full really quick. You get hungrier sooner and you're not actually building up your protein for the day so that by the time you get to the end of the day, you're like, oh crap, now I'm supposed to eat a hundred grams of carb, like for dinner, no way. And that's going to be really hard on your gut. Mm. So for any of you that have gone to eat, what's that restaurant? Fogo de Chao, where it's like a meat, just like meat, like you just eat meat. <laughs> it's just crazy. Anyway, so simple things to kind of target and look at when you're doing this is getting enough protein for all of these meals. And you can space it out evenly. Um, which I've shown a lot of examples of, but this example, I am going to shoot for some, a few different things. It's just because sometimes if you're on the go or if you're, you know, running here and there and doing all these things and you're like, Oh, how do I get 20 grams of protein at each meal? How do I make sure I get 30 grams of protein at each meal? I really want to increase my energy. And that's how you do that. So here we go. Instead of just trying to even it up and space things out evenly, that can be really tough to do. We're going to overshoot protein for breakfast and say, get 30 grams here. We're going to try and get 30 grams of protein at breakfast. Now, what does that look like? Well, an egg has like six, maybe seven grams of protein. So if you're having two eggs, great, but you may want to add two egg whites in there. You're going to up your protein a lot. Yes, it's a little more food, but adding a couple more egg whites, again, you're going to get the protein and the energy or add a half a cup, like a couple of eggs, half a cup or a cup of Greek yogurt or anything else that you want to do. Sometimes um, if you're having a carb or oatmeal or something like that, add in some protein powder to your oatmeal, add it, make protein pancakes, all these little things. So if you're having eggs and pancakes, you get, you get to count that protein that counts. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a breakfast. Say your snack, if you're having a, a protein shake or something like that on the go, super. If you don't have time to do that, if you're like, I'm all over the place, I don't know. And it's really tough for me or I'm at work or I don't have a break. Oh, what do I do? Okay. Let's try and get at least 10 grams of protein in here for a snack of the day. Plus, if you're eating a lot of protein for breakfast, some people are like, I'm not that hungry for my snack. I'm just not that hungry. That's okay. You're getting a lot for breakfast and then having at least something here. Very important to keep spacing things out. It levels out your blood sugar. It increases your metabolism like you wouldn't believe. Um, and then for a lunch, again, overshoot here. You want to you wanna have 30 or more grams of protein here. The more you can get in the beginning of the day, the better. And there's some, you know, food philosophies, thoughts on this where people talk about eating, um, eating dinner for breakfast, all those other things, because people generally eat the most amount of food at the end of the day. Well, your digestive system slows down towards the end of the day and at night while you're sleeping. So you really want to have the most caloric amount, the most calories in the top half of the day, like before noon or before one o'clock. That's going to help a ton, a ton, a ton. Um, so here you go. 
you know, adding this 30 grams, 10 grams, 30 grams. And again, you're really pushing at these marks here at the breakfast and the lunches, but making sure your snacks are higher in protein here too. Um, again, for then afternoon snack, you know, again, let's just put another 10, say you don't have a lot of time. Again, it's nuts. You're grabbing nuts on the go, or you're just taking like a, um, like a rice cake, a rice cake and peanut butter or something like that. And Again, simple, fast, quick. You can keep rice cakes and peanut butter in your car. I do that sometimes. <laughs> and you're getting something, right? But you're getting some protein. Again, that's a complete nutrient, protein, fat, carb in there. One thing I will say is that does not include your vitamins and minerals of, you know, green vegetables and all those other things too. So those are, of course, important. Um, but a great tip, if you haven't tried it, is if you have powdered greens, mix that in with your peanut butter. Get your greens in there. You get those nutrients in there. And peanut butter. And who doesn't love peanut butter? Again, if you can't have peanut butter or you're worried about that, you can have cashew butter, almond butter, sun butter. All types of nutty butters will work. And mixing in greens with them. Yay. Okay. So again, really focusing on these breakfast and lunches. High, high protein. Again, some type of healthy protein snack involved here. You can space it evenly throughout the day. Again, I have a lot of videos on that. But here we're just targeting this this um, for, for today. <clears throat> and then again, having at least 30 plus grams of protein for dinner. And again, this is an easy, easy thing to do. Uh, most people can get enough protein with dinner. So all in all, when we're adding this up, this is over 100 grams of protein for the day. You know, 30, 60, 90, 120. I'm doing the math right, and I'm writing all that backwards. So Pardon the handwriting, but so 120 grams of protein for the day. There you go. You, you're, you made it, you know, and some of it is just focusing a little bit more on the breakfast, lunches, and dinners, making sure they're top heavy in protein. And then your snacks, making sure you are including some type of protein. I get this question a lot. Well, I'm having an apple or I'm having a piece of fruit. Great. You need to have some protein in there. Otherwise you're going to be super hungry and you're going to have a hard time making it to your next meal. And then when you do make it to your next meal, you're going to be like, um, I'm wicked hungry, or you're going to eat a ton of carb really, really quickly, and it's not going to go as well as you planned. So, um, anyway, sorry, if there's background noise, my son is playing Minecraft on my computer. I'm not, I don't know, he, he likes me to watch the Minecraft stuff. I don't, if anybody knows how to handle the Minecraft stuff, I would appreciate tips on that because it's, I, I get dizzy. Like, like he shows me the things and I'm like, oh, it's a little Blair Witch for me in there. I get a little dizzy. Okay. Anyway, back to proteins. We'll talk about proteins again. So breakdown for the day, really, really easy. Bioavailability. The, these are just, again, samples of where you can get protein from. Meat, dairy, and then other plant proteins. Meat, make sure that it is um, a lean source of protein. Again, fish, all that stuff. Great, uh, you know, scallops or mussels or, you know, seafood too great sources of protein. Um, but meat is sort of a fast, easy way to get a lot of protein in, but it can be harder to break down. Again, if we're talking about getting to the end of the day and you're like, Oh, I really missed out on my protein for the first half of the day. If you're trying to eat a lot of meat at night, it can be really hard to break down. So if you're eating meat, try and space it out, you know, throughout the day. So your body can break it down and digest it better. Um, but meat is very bioavailable. Fish is very bioavailable. Dairy products. For some people, they can handle dairy. Some people cannot. And if you are getting dairy in your diet and it's really, um, you know, you're getting upset stomachs, you are getting gas, you're getting bloating, and say you switch a type of, you know, um, protein source you're getting that from. You know, if you switch and you start incorporating cheese and yogurt and you didn't eat a lot of that before and you're starting to get digestive issues, it may, it may be because of the dairy and you may have to cut that out and, and work with the other sources here. Um, if you are getting a problem, if you're having a problem with um, a, pro, a protein powder, and I've had this question recently, and sometimes it's just that it's more bioavailable. So yes, you're breaking it down more, but it's also causing a little bit more issue in your stomach. So you'll have to switch them from a dairy source of protein to a plant source of protein. Plant proteins are typically very, very bioavailable, and they will upload really, really quickly and easily into the bloodstream, into your body. Yay, except for one plant protein, and that plant protein is, no, I'm writing that backwards, soy. 
soy is not bioavailable. Can't break it down, can't digest it. You will break down some of it, but not a ton of it. So really be careful and make sure whatever protein source you're getting that it is not mainly soy. That will be hard on your gut and your digestive system. So hopefully this is a good, these are good tips. Um, if you are a person who wants more information, then please let me know. If you have questions, message me, comment on the video. I love answering these questions. If you are wanting more info or how to break plastic plateau, if you're like, how do I piece this apart or I want a meal plan guide, I will include the link for the you know meal plan that I have so you can follow this to get more protein, to get all this information laid out really beautifully for you. So there is all that there. And then I do have a six week challenge coming up. I am gonna talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. And um, the ladies that I have working on the six week program that I've worked with, some of their results, cause they're amazing. And the sh shifts and changes that they've had in their lives and their energy and everything else. It's not just about you know losing some weight or whatever. It's about getting your body to be the best health that it can be. And I'm really passionate about it because I'm on a mission to change health for women. There's so much misinformation out there. There are so many programs and things out there that are designed for men, not for women. So that is my mission is to let women know what they need to do for their own bodies. And if you're stuck on something or you're trying something and you're like, oh, what the hell? This isn't working. I want to be able to show you the tools that you can be in control of what's going on in your body. And you're not just like, oh, I'm stuck. I'm frustrated. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know which thing to try next because everything I try, I think it's going to work. And then it doesn't work or it's working for all my friends. Why is it working for them and not for me? I'll be able to walk you through that and, and explain that in the six week program. So I'm really excited about it. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you have any questions, again, let me know. If this information has been valuable for you or you know somebody that could use some of this information about how to break things down to be healthier, please share this video. Again, I am on a mission to help as many women as possible get to their optimal health. And um, so by sharing this video, you are going to help me along that mission. And I really, really appreciate it. Everybody have a great Saturday and I will see you guys tomorrow.